and welcome back to Satisfactory Update 6. My name is Ninaus and I'll be your guide on this Let's Play slash tutorial guide walkthrough. You can call it whatever it is. It is a series and uh, we are just catching up on where we left off last time. We built these, this magnificent building of our factory producing circuits. So why do we want circuits? What I've also done is now I'm sending it back. So it's all good. So we have it back at our hub. And uh, what we need to do now is we actually need to build the next thing. And that is, uh, well, let's get started on it. Um, let's see. So why do we build circuits? There's only one reason to build circuits, and that is basically because you want to make computers, because they will always need circuits. And then, of course, there are other things that need circuits as well. But let's see. This is probably the main part that we want to focus on. So this is all about finding a shortcut to computers, because uh, this is absolutely atrocious, the amount of screws and junk and all that stuff. There's also the other thing, like... We are, um, for some reason, I don't like doing oil, and therefore this requires pl plastic, this requires rubber. So maybe we could do another thing like we did for the circuits without actually using oil so we don't have to bring in the oil to this location. What about we do this one? This has the added advantage instead of making it in a manufacturer, we can make it in an assembler. But the catch is that you would need to make, uh, yeah, this one. You'd have to make a lot of crystal oscillators. So let's have a look at the crystal oscillator because that will be what we need to do in order to do what I can, we'll call a shortcut to computers because computers made with an assembler with just circuits and crystal oscillators is super simple. The caveat is that we of course need to make this. Now, again, I'm looking at the at this and going, okay, so if I'm making AI limiters, because this is objectively the best one, uh, then... I would need to get the Caterium, which I don't have. I need to make an AI limiter build. I eh, don't have that. I need to make a plastic build, a rubber build. The thing is, I don't. I want to avoid rubber and plastic until I have the blender recipe, because when I have the blender recipe, I can use the third of these, the alternative recipe two, the one that is using plastic and fuel to make more uh, rubber. And I want to use that, but I can't use that until I have the blender recipe. So I want to avoid using the blender recipe. Hence, I use this. And we have the added advantage that Reinforced iron plates can be made with a stitched iron plate. That means it's just, that's the alternate recipe one. Iron plates plus wire. Those wire can be made by, instead of copper wire, made by iron wire. So this will be entirely iron. And this is the cable can be also made with iron wire. So again, more iron. So this means if I use this recipe, all it needs to do is two things in, quartz crystal and iron wire. So that's pretty good. Let's uh, go through the motions of figuring out how that actually works. We are going to have a building here. This will make the crystal oscillators, the default crystal oscillators, like this. And I want to aim for 12 of these. Then uh, in order to the inputs, the quartz crystal, we need to make it. And I want to make the quartz crystal. We have two different options of making quartz crystals. We have the wet co quartz crystals there. This is 9 to 7. Or we have the default one, which is 5 to 3. So I'm going to do that one because down here down there we have water so we have a uh, water that's okay on top of that i can actually also look at the other thing here we can also need some iron ingots let's uh, make them more efficient and therefore we use the wet one as well if we're going to bring water in for this we might as well bring water in for that one as well and therefore we get the best possible recipes we can uh, so we now have the quartz crystals we need here that's the quartz crystals. Then we need the cable and reinforced iron wire. Uh, then we can start with the ingots. Ingots will be formed into plates and one case, and it'll be formed into. Also, the other one is iron wire. That's the second one, and then it'll be formed into also uh, cable, iron cape, or yeah, iron wire cable. And the last one that we need to make is the reinforced iron plate. We are going to use the stitched iron plate. Super efficient recipe. This one will be uh, what we need. So all of these are the types of items we need. And we just need to find up a scale. I have decided that I need 12 of these ones operational, 12 of these. This is about how I do all my designs, figure out what recipes I want to use so I can find out what resources I need. Try to figure out whether I want to make like many different resources, few resources, finding some ratios, then uh, take a look at, uh, I'm, I've already decided 12 and that's because of the limitations uh, some other places. And then we'll sort of count backwards here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start by looking at the final product. That's the one here. If I want to make 12 crystal oscillators, then I'm going to need 
30 reinforced iron plates, 168 cables, and 216 crystal uh, quartz crystals. 12 of those. So the quartz crystals, if I use the wet recipe, I use 155 water, and I use 5 of those. That's not bad. Then I can count backwards. I need wire. That's going to be only 6 of these. That's not a problem. This uh, 10 or uh, the 30 reinforced iron plates, not a problem. That's actually going to be just six of them. I'm always rounding up because of course I am. And here for the iron plates, for the wire, this wire will go into both here and to here. So it's 200 wire here and 336 volt wire here. All that, that's going to be 24, so that's kind of big. And then we need, need to count backwards and say, okay, if I need to get 298 iron ingots plus another 150 iron ingots that gives us 448 iron ingots calculate backwards get 138 water that's seven refineries here now what i'm looking at is here 138 plus 155 is less than 300 so that's nice that's less than one one belt and it means only one extractor worth of uh, of water what i also can see here is 448 Iron ingots, well, iron ingots 448 is less than a Mark 4 belt, so that's pretty good. Whether I wanted to sort of, whether you want to use this recipe or not, that's up to you. Uh, I'm just using this one, and therefore we're not really using a lot of iron for this build. And then we just look at all of this, and then for me it's become pretty obvious that I'm going to have one level with trains. Then I'm going to have one level with the final one, 12 of these, they take quite a bit of space. Then I'm going to have another level that is, let's see if I can do that. That's going to be the re the uh, this part, um, the refineries, and that will be as close to the water as possible, so I don't have to pump it very far. And then that kind of g gives us a another opportunity where we'll basically say that all of this is then on a second level. So we're going to have four levels. S level minus one, you could say, is going to be the refineries. Level zero is going to be the train level. Level one will be all of the assemblers and constructors, and level. Two will be the final products, the crystal oscillator build. And I want to build it somewhere out here. The crystal oscillator, uh, the crystal quartz crystal is already coming in. So I just need to have iron ingots or iron wire coming, sorry, iron ore coming in. And uh, we need to build a location out here. We'll keep the train in this level. So let's try to build that now that we have the calculations for what we need. And of course, we need to remember how much of each of these things we want to do. But it also gives you an idea about how I how I do designs and uh, maybe that can inspire you to do the same thing. Now we have built the platform and the the rails coming into the platform and the train stations as well. So what you can see is I'm just branching from the main line here in getting into this one. This will be my iron ore and this will be my quartz crystal and then looping back and going back out into uh, the main line. Nothing much in, in terms of, of that and uh, when we go down here at the lower level someone put some trees in my factory but i think that's going to be just fine so this is going to be close to the water so we can extend this out here grab a little water extractor get it up to this location and what all i need to do now is make the lines here i'm going to make two lines and the first thing is let's see one two that one i guess and i will get And we'll just wait for the signal. Uh, where is it? Why are we not seeing it? That's weird. Ugh, man, it's always like this. There. So we'll get, we'll build these according, accordingly. And uh, these will be, hmm, what is it? It is going to be, this is going to be the iron ore. I will also build it here. Build that one. Can we just please get it? Okay, I have to stand on top of this for it to uh, recognize it. There. Yeah, that's not working. Yeah. Right, so what uh, I'm going to do here, and that means I will be able to take my water in here and in here. All the way down here, and that water will be super simple. I'll always make it like that. So it goes in, and then I'll have on top of it. I'll show you how to easily make that. I will have from one side 
into this location that will be the iron ore which will come from up here and down and then from the other side one higher up I'm gonna have the, the quartz crystal coming in that means quartz crystal goes here and iron ore goes here this is iron ore requiring 35 remember this is 65 out so you can't make do with a level one belt this is the wet quartz crystal and therefore 67.5 that means i have to use a higher tier and then we do that so that we can uh, we can get five of the quartz and seven of the iron ore and so this is built i love the fact that we can just skip ahead and uh, get everything sorted let's have a look at what it looks like when it's all done and i've now made this thing which is how i almost always will make my power poles and we also have a here a connection but the power poles will be on instead of having power poles i'll have these uh, basically a frame around things which makes it a lot easier and a lot nicer so you don't need to mess with uh with power poles so they are coming in here uh, the raw quartz the raw quartz is coming out at that location which will now be ready to go up. I'll just mark it all the way over here. That will go not one level up because that's the train station, but two levels up. Nope, that'll be three levels up even this one. Um, and over on the other side, over at this location here, I have the iron out. This will go not one level up, but two levels up. One level up is the train station. Two levels up is the next place where we want to build. And I am going to put something down here, bring it up. And then leave this little thing here as the very last thing so that we can, when we enable that, it, the whole thing will work. Uh, I've also just cleaned up so we can have our trees luckily and happily in our base. Yeah, they're probably not going to last for long. And I'm also going to go up now, up beyond one level up from the train station and then build. So this is also a big area. I don't know if I need to build it all the way. Well, I, don't, I do know that I don't need to build it all the way over here. Um... Let's see. And take out the trees because of course we do. Good. So at this point I need to figure out sort of uh, all of the things. Do you remember how much we needed to do? Nope. Uh, do I remember? Yeah, kind of. So we need to do a few things. And let me start just from here, I guess. That's going to be the middle. This will be the iron wire build there. And we need 24 of these. So... What we need is another one over on this side. There. And I will need to get it inbound here. So I'm going to get iron ingots in here. That will split two. Two sides of copper wire, uh, iron wire going down here. Then we are going to get the iron wire outbound. I'm going to get the outbound and push it down there. Yeah. Next, I will also need to get one more thing that requires iron ingots. And that is, from this location, I will need to make it into iron plates. Do you remember how many of those we need? There. I need five of these, so that should be easy to do, right? Two. Three. I'm only making the easy ones far and five, right? This one will also need to be collected and I will collect this in a branch here and a merger, which will then go, actually, I think this merger will probably be pointing directly into next. And then this one will sort of collect it over here. So it'll be collected to this location. Then we come to the next part, which will be the reinforced iron plate. I will be making a splitter here which will be all of the ingots coming from that location and then i'm gonna get the iron wire that will be coming from all the first line that we made down this all the way down there and then loop around and come in here from the other side so what i need is to make a here here comes a the trick I hope I can remember it. This is, okay, so an assembler takes basically two tiles. And if you want to have it the perfect distance so that you can take that one and it snaps automatically, then you place it on the middle and then take one step to the side. 
and and we'll pay, make it maybe like that no come on obviously yes and listen ah oh, that beautiful beautiful sound and obviously this doesn't need to be fast either good so this will make our stitched iron plates and we need to make a few more of these we need to make remember six of those and that's gonna be here next one will be that one and we don't have enough do we maybe that one and that's five and one more six so this needs to be done and then uh, after all of this then we will have reinforced iron plates coming out they will be coming out on this location there and they will be going let's just mark it as here and then for up for later on we have one more thing because we have all the way back here, we remember the iron wire needs to for two things. One is for stitch plates and the other one is for, uh, let's see, what was it? It was for <clears throat> uh, cable. Yes. So we're going to be taking it with the input coming from down here and then making cables here. And we need six of those for cables. And I need to also bring that out. So cables will now be going that way. So that will basically be the build that I want to do here. I'll have six of these that I need to build and I need to hook up belts and power poles, having a frame to do all of that. Whew. Well, that's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, let me uh, just go over here and uh, wish our troubles away. Having wished our troubles away, we are now ready for showing you what it looks like when it is ready to go. So here we have, let's uh, recap. All of this is for making cable. All of this is for making stitched iron plates. And by the way, if you are enjoying this series and uh, hopefully you will be inspired and uh, maybe learn a few things or at least be entertained, then uh, be sure to hit the like button. That helps a lot for me and uh, the visibility of these videos. Uh, also remember that uh, you can subscribe if you uh, are not already subscribed to the channel, uh, no pressure. And also if you want to see more and be part of the design process, I'm streaming Satisfactory over on Twitch. It's at Twitch TV slash Nilaus and it's on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays. So do come on over and say hi. And remember what this is. This is the iron plates. And over here we have 2 times 12 iron wire. So each one of these rows is making 270. So that means we have actually a problem. Why so do we have a problem? Well, this is this uh, stitch plate is using 200 and the other one is using 336. So if I just put them all on a belt together, then it's going to overstack the belt. If I put them on two belts then they are not going to be even so what i need to do is actually do i didn't have enough all right i must have uh, gotten stuck there uh we'll get that before we enable the whole thing so uh, we'll have to imagine that it um it is coming in here there it's coming in here that's 270 coming in and that goes up to the top here which will prioritize going straight ahead that prioritization means that it'll come down here. 270 will go on this belt, but only 200 will be consumed. So after a very long time, it'll start saturating and backfilling. And then that means the last 70 will flow, overflow there, down and to the next one, which will then be a merge down here. Uh, just a normal merge, which means it gets 270 from this side. Plus after a while, the 70 more here. And that means I get 340 coming out. And if you remember correctly, I need 336 at this location. So very, very close to uh, accurate ratio or perfect ratio. That means also it's going to take forever for it to stack up. It is the way it is. And uh, we'll just have to deal with it. Now we have these things out here. This is the cable. I would want to get the cable up to the next level. So yeah, okay. That's still the one we have problems with. Let's go up here and take a look at what I want to build at the top level. So we have now the, from the bottom, we have the refinery level, 
for the raw materials into ingots and raw quartz. Then we have the level zero, that's for train stations. Level one is for all the assemblers and the constructors. And then the top level here will be for construct uh, these monstrosities. And I need to make 12 of them. So how do I make 12 in a good and reasonable way? Well, the first thing is I need to find out a good location and then use the balancing perspective. So I want to leave some space out here for transport lanes. That means I need this for this one. I might as well make it like this. And that's one, two, here. And let's yeah, let's explain. So what I'm going to do now is I'm basically always saying that a, a, a constructor or manufacturer takes three by three. It doesn't quite take three by three, but that's a good measure uh, to do that. So if I just put it in the middle here and in the middle here, then it's going to be positioned in the middle at this location as well. Now, what is more important than middle is the fact that when I build a line here, which will be coming in from this side, There. It'll be three inputs. That means it's going to be the first input. It's going to be in this third one. And it's going to be in the fourth one. And I take this out. So if we go by the usual metric, that doesn't work. And that's why I need to take this thing. And move it one closer to the input. If I do that, you will see it's magical and it works. There. I will now link it from. Oh, that beautiful little click sound is all we want. And obviously we need to make it as a level one belt right here and a level one belt in there. And then we can build the other one, which will be somewhat the same location. Uh, it'll be one, two, and then I bring it one closer. With this build, that I think is good because now it has connections straight in. Try again. That looks correct. And this connected, connected, good. All right, so that is one pair of, uh, of this, and I need six pairs. So if I'm standing on this corner and looking out, and then we should be able to get that done. So it is done. We have 12 of these up here. I'll just go through how it works. And we've also hooked it up. So what I'm getting here is, let's look at it from all the way out. You can see all the way down here, we've got the crystal quartz coming in. That goes on the top line. We get the cable on the middle line and we get the reinforced iron plates on the lower line comes out here get split get split more into here go on the other side here also get split looking good and the outputs will be collected here collected here and collected to be sent back all the way back to our main base which should be good so the only thing we're missing at this point is a train let's get a copy of a train here and I wonder if I can actually build it like this and hope that it works two three and four it's almost certainly not connected but hey what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up two trains I'm going to set one that goes to the quartz let's just go there off we go so this train will go to quartz and we'll have another one that goes to iron as well so we are now heading all the way out to our Quartz deposit, it's out here on the borderline be, uh, to the monochromatic swamp. And uh, we have our starter base back there. It's all looking good. Let's just head in and see how much we have. We probably don't have everything here because we just had another. This is now servicing two different locations. But if I just jump out and see how much is in here, uh, it's actually almost, almost uh, ready. It's so close to being everything in here. So we'll be loading the box. Do like the loading animation. Don't like the the way that trains have been implemented. They leave a lot of things to be desired, like 
do you wait until train is full? Do you just get a single load? Do you take whatever? Is it until idle? All of these things, the conditions we're used to in Factorio are still missing. But we can hope that they are, will be added soon enough. And we should get, there we go. That's a little honk. We should be heading out of the station ASAP. Let's go. And finally it works. This is because we had missing the crystal oscillator as the destination station. Now we've left the station. And at this point, all we need to do is go over and find a, do the same thing for iron. We have an iron deposit that we have tapped and we'll be tapping a bit more of that there. We are reaching our new iron ore facility here at uh, just as we are heading into sunset. This is our copper ore and this is our iron ore now. Oh, I thought it was about to start raining. Let's have a look at it where it is on the map. I will just scan. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is uh, where we have it. You can see we have tap one location. I'm only getting uh, 240 outbound. So we can go in here. Take a look. This is uh, Iron Station. And I will go also to Crystal Oscillator Iron Ore. And what happens? They will just load up the train fully. I hope that will be fully loading the train. Well, it will be fully loading the train. It's been standing here forever and waiting, so let's get that. Oh, that looks funny. It took up the whole thing. Huh. There we go. This train has been loaded and we are ready to head back to the location. All right, so let's see when we are back at the, the base and ready and start have unloading this. Now, remember, nothing will work until we... Uh, okay, it should be working. Uh, until we enable the water, because we had a little tiny water place that is enabling everything. So the train can go over there and unload, but nothing starts until we have the water ready. And look at this beautiful scenery and look how close we are to clipping that one just integrated into the wilderness. And we have over, we can see see our new base uh, just over there. Now we're coming in and night train is arriving at the station. And it is coming in. Beautiful, this is the iron ore and over on the other side we have the raw quartz being unloaded only a bit of it is unloaded because it has already arrived a few times and here we have also sent this out a few times and uh, what we can then do is or what we can look at is here we have a little hub this one goes back to our hub this one goes down to our refineries this goes up to our uh, constructors and this goes up to our finished products with manufacturers so let's zoom on down and uh, as i said nothing works until we actually hook up the water, but we can still look at these locations so you can see they are fully saturated. They are they're saturated and all we need is we have the water here. Water's coming up. It's ready. It's good. And as soon as we do this, we will just follow that all the way through this whole process. It's beautiful. It's going to be up. And I'm sending 300 water in, plus of course we have more stocked up, so it's coming in right now at 600. So we should be able to start getting some more products here. We should see this one moving as well. And then coming some products out. There we go, that's the first iron ingots going out. And over here we have the first raw quartz going out, so I will be going one level up. And I'm sure that one thing that you are be, you are shaking your head, I can hear the head shaking, is that these are just floating platforms. Don't worry, we'll fix that. But I uh, like to focus on the efficiency and the scale of things first, and then we can uh, make something in terms of sort of or aesthetic if we feel like it later on. So let's uh, start by going over here. We have the iron ingots. I am going to split them into two. Uh, that should be a problem. This one is using 150, and this one is using 300. So right now too much will be sent in here but um yeah this is a manifold build so it's going to take quite a while to scale up what we see here is the iron ingots or iron plates coming out and being slowly and gradually fed into the stitched iron plates over on all of this side we have all of the copper or iron wire that is coming out and that will come in here it's not fast it's not a lot but there is something and this will just gradually, gradually, gradually scale up. And we can just follow these things along. So here it goes in to make reinforced iron plates. And over on the other side, it goes in to make 
the ingots. What is it called? Uh, no, it's not in the ingots. Cables. Cables are stuff that we never have enough of. Hey, thank you. Dawn is coming so we can actually see our factory. Now, there's still kind of a little plateau in the way, so that will prevent some kind of uh, watching what we're doing. But hey, we get it. We get, we get something. And hopefully, at some point, we will start getting the stuff outbound that we need. It's going to take quite a while for this one to stack up. But uh, hey, luckily, patience is a virtue, and uh, we do have a bit of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down. Jump down here. Go to the top level. And... Once you come out, we see that things are going out on these belts. We get the raw quartz coming in. We should get some cables here, but we don't get any stitched iron plates yet. But they will get here. So what I will do is I'll stand here in the corner and we'll just we'll just wait a bit. Now we've been waiting and you can see that many of these are now turning green, which is lovely. Let's have a look. We are making the first crystal oscillators, crystal oscillators, all of this. It's actually just one, two, three, four of them are not working. But I still, if I still have eight of those, then I'm still producing eight per minute. At this point, with all of this operational. Okay, this one just started doing something. Maybe export. I don't know. Uh, this will just take a while, and it's always going to be the stitch down plates that we're waiting for here. Yeah, but we'll get one. We'll get one stitch down plate in here as well, and we'll get all four of these, uh, all twelve of these working, giving us a total of twelve uh, crystal oscillators per minute. And then we, what we can do is we can just hitch a ride on here, and as we do that, one thing becomes painfully obvious. It's kind of floaty, isn't it? It's kind of floaty. It, it works really well and each level is fine, but it's kind of floaty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be just, uh, again, with a whoosh. We're going to make it uh, nice with some nice curves. We always like curves. So let's uh, try to make some curves on this and make it look more like a factory and less like some floating islands. And here we have the new iteration of the factory. A 12 crystal oscillators per minute coming in here. And it has a nice train station, train terminal feel to it. On the top level, we have these loops. And uh, inside each of those, we have six assemblers. Basically, the way I do it, I do the straight one, then I do the tilted wall, then I do the glass roof four, glass roof two, glass roof one, and then the glass roof flat. And then loop down again on the other side. And that's going to be my recurring theme for this factory and also for probably other factories as well. Uh, if we just jump one level down and have a look at what it looks like down here, then we also have a little curve to loop it in where it then fits and we have some glass so we can go look down here at the station and on the, aside from this nice open terminal i'm not doing anything for these corners and that's deliberate because uh, no matter what you do it kind of gets a bit clunky also if we look out it just looks really nice to have like a view of the outside as well don't want to hide away all of that outside stuff uh, as if we go down we'll skip the train level because that's going to be where we end but here uh, the lower level, I have just made the kind of the opposite, making a slope upwards uh, here. So we can go down and look at the scenery through the safety of the glass so the trees won't assault us or anything nasty like that. Uh, what we can then do, yeah, here it's just chugging along and it's just really nice, nicely working. And let's go up. Go up here and come into our train station, which has very much a train station look and feel to it. Uh, with this loop down here and then they come in i like this uh, like this design i hope you liked it as well i hope you have found this episode interesting engaging uh, entertaining all that good stuff all the things that the uh, youtube episodes need to be in order for me to earn your subscription and the likes on the uh, on this uh, video so thank you very much everyone for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you want to be part of the design process come on over to twitch because i have tons more stuff there and we are building all these cool things uh, together so until next time, take care, and as always, stay effective.